I would like first uh, to introduce her excellent, uh, his excellent, uh, his excellency, uh, Mr. Yudaya uh, Gamani Pilar, Minister of Energy of Sri Lanka, who will deliver a video message. Distinguished panelists, ladies and gentlemen, as an environmentally focused country with a rich natural heritage, Sri Lanka wishes to be part of a global effort to address the climate emergency by making a commitment to net zero carbon emissions by 2050. The Minister of Energy wishes to lead this initiative, part of which, which would include a decarbonization target of 2030 in line with the aspiration of H.G. the President himself. Sri Lanka's approach to the energy transition requires us to navigate several conflicting pressures in the short term while putting in place diverse sustainability strategies for the future. The economic contraction and social disruptions due to the COVID-19 pandemic has provided significant challenges to the government, causing us to prioritize livelihood recovery above all else. Notwithstanding these pressures, Sri Lanka has already launched various initiatives to decarbonize our energy mix. We are encouraging distributed renewable energy through very low interest loans to support homeowners with rooftop solar panels showing continued growth. We are also adding solar energy to the grid through small scale renewable energy projects at a community level that will support local economies. My ministry, which provides fuel for the transport network, is also moving aggressively forward with plans for zero emission in public transport. Over the long term, Sri Lanka has planned to green for energy systems based primarily on two major initiatives. The first is to harness our abundant wind and solar potential to generate green hydrogen for domestic use as well as export. We are in discussion with Greenstat of Norway and the hydrogen cluster in India in this regard. But we also welcome other global innovators to work with us. The second is a large-scale planned reforestation program designed to both increase our carbon capture capability as well as generate biofuels to blend with our refinery outputs, together with high-grade organic fertilizer for soil enrichment and crop enhancement. In summary, Sri Lanka recognizes the urgent energy transition required to secure the future of the planet for our children and their children, and request the global scientific and investor communities to work with us to shape a transition to a net zero world that is both practical for Sri Lanka in her development context, yet consistent with all of our common long-term sustainability goals. I wish the UN high-level dialogue on energy every success.